I have two replicas of the very first L88 Corvette. The early version in red, the later version in blue. The first L88 Corvette out of the factory was a rally red coupe. It went straight to Roger Penske's shop, right off the production line. They quickly began modifying it for competition. They began competing with the car in this configuration. Later on, the car was painted blue to go with their Sunoco sponsorship. And other things were changed on the car as well. I made this model for a client who owns a full-scale replica of the red version. I started with a die cast, a Danbury Mint die cast, of the second iteration, the blue version. And I had done the product development work on this car while at the Danbury Mint. So I was very familiar with this configuration. And I knew it could be backdated to the red version. One of the reasons why I chose the Danbury Mint car was the chrome, all the trim, the door handles is real chrome. So it's not vac plated. I know it's good and sturdy because I'd have to disassemble it and then repaint the car in red and the chrome looks great. With the choice made to start with the die cast, I picked up a distressed version of it on eBay. First step was then to compare everything on this version that would be dated to the earlier version. My client sent me countless images for reference. So I began by making a comparison and a list and collecting parts of what I need. I started laying everything out in trays, just keeping everything organized. The common aspect between the two versions is one is the engine. The Traco prepared L88 in gray. That stayed the same as well as the interior. But there are some differences, some of them major. Once I have my parts and reference in order, it's time to disassemble the car. For the most part, die casts come apart with some simple screws in the bottom. You can pull the chassis and the body apart from each other. What will happen on any Danbury Mint car, because it has functioning steering that goes all the way back to the steering wheel, the steering column will need to be separated at some point from that body interior unit and the chassis unit. And that steering box is full of grease, so watch out for that. I got all the chrome taken out of it, the back window from the inside, I had to grind it out. Same with the taillights. The casting of the body is very thick in the back and I had to literally go in from the back and grind them loose. The advantage was, as I'm grinding, it also shook the taillights loose. So eventually they did come out. It's chrome. Those bezels are really super sturdy. So that's one of the great gains of not working with the vac plate parts. The doors on these cars open up. So in prepping the body, for paint. I laid in magnets inside so the doors would close. They'd be held tight with a magnet. A tight final position where they would line up with the body. Then I took sandpaper and I blocked the body down. I brought the height of the outer panels so the door and the body would be the same. It takes the roll out of the edge. It sharpens the edge on both the body and the door. It just looks more realistic. Once the body is removed, the next step is to remove the paint. It seems like you could pretty much just clean it up with Dawn, lay on some red paint and you'd be all set. But you have a couple issues. Like I mentioned, that grease that's in the steering box and this whole car, when it leaves the factory for the Danbury Mint, it's coated in wax and there's a lot of silicon there. That has to come off because the paint's just not going to stick well to the silicone. You're going to end up with fish eyes. So the big step is to put it in the bath. First thing I tried was aircraft stripper. It sat in there, most of it came off. There were still some really difficult spots. Eventually after dipping three or four times, I got it off. Once the body was clean, now remember it's made out of Zamac, which is zinc. You really don't want it to sit out in the oxygen for long and have that oxidized. So you want to get the primer on as soon as possible. With the body all cleaned up and dry, it's time to use self-etching primer just to seal that metal. I use it right out of a spray can because I really don't like cleaning my airbrush that much. Next in line, it's time to fire up the airbrush. MCW Rally Red, which is a perfect match for that factory color. One of the great advantages of working with a Danbury Mint diecast is the quality of the photo edge. It's pre-painted and has a lot of detail. 
I saved them, I collected them, and now I have extra. There are no decals available that are hyper accurate for this car. Monogram kit, you think you could pick that up and use the nine, spin it around, but it's not the same font. So we're working on the body, getting the paint stripped and the paint on. I was having the decals made. One of the big details that's unique to the red car are the headlights. When Penske set this car up in his shop, they used CBA headlights, these big oval headlights from France. They're super bright. As much as they might look unique here, we've all seen them before. They're the headlights on the monkey mobile. They're also the headlights that Barris used on the Fireball 500 car. They're behind the grill, but they're there. If you check out the movie, you'll see a scene where those lights come on. They're really amazing. So I removed the four headlights that were on it originally. I looked around, I found the best headlights were from the Fireball 500 kit. I used those. I tinted them yellow to the French spec for headlights. I was able to use the clear plastic covers without much modification. The other thing was position of the fog lights. They had to be positioned more inboard. That was pretty straightforward. On the back, the license plate had to be deleted. On the die cast, it has a Prova plate. When I took that off, there were two alignment pins for that chrome bezel that held that plate in right into the Zamac body. So I was left with two big holes. So I made a flat plate to go over that just to cover it. Nice and simple. I added some details for the fasteners that are in there for when a license plate would actually go on the car. Pretty standard stuff on a Danbury Mint car with hood pins is to have them actually functioning. So when you open it up, you've got the post, the hood comes down, and you've got a tiny pin that you can slide into the opening in that post if you're brave. I had to do that on this car, but on the blue car, a chain was used for the keeper on the clip. On this car, it's a braided wire. So I had to make that conversion. I used some silver thread, that I think was great because it held that curve shape just like what I saw in the reference photo. The big consideration was put into these fender flares. It's just like a real crazy addition that went on, I'm sure, in no time at the track when those tech inspectors told them they had to fix it, fix it quick. Initially, when they got to their first competition, the tech inspectors were a little upset with the fact that the guys had opened up the wheel wells, and allowed the, the big tires to really breathe. So they made them add these aluminum flares to cover the tires. It's a temporary fix so they could get it in the race. The crew put them on. They used like a zillion pop rivets to hold things back together. It took me much longer to actually create these flares, I'm sure, than it did that entire crew. And then put on all these little photo etch rivets. I think it's a great detail. For the tires, I really wanted to match that mid-60s Firestone tread stock. So I used Plastic Performance Products Firestone stock car tires. The issue was they were slightly too wide. So what I did was chucked them up on the lathe and I narrowed them. I also smoothed down the sidewalls because I knew I wanted the gold Firestone lettering. And for that, I used some of these guys. I got a bunch of these from Indicals in different sizes so I could find out what was just right for my application. These worked out really well. A Little bit of setting solution, they snugged right down. In the end, on the tires, they were a little too glossy, even though I had overcoated them. I took a little black pastel with a brush and just worked it into the tread just to dull it down enough. For the wheels, I wanted a slightly more aggressive, slightly deeper dish to the wheel. So I took these wheels, put them on the lathe, cut them down so I had the two outer rings and the center spokes. I then finished them off, painted them, reassembled them, and they went right in and fit right back on the car. For the exhaust, the side pipes, I had to lengthen slightly. On the blue version, they weren't quite close enough to the rear wheels. Painted them white, connected them, and then I detailed them. The outlet, I painted flat black. 
But to make it just a little more matte finish, I added a little bit of black pastel to that. Just worked it into the opening. On the edge where the four pipes enter the main pipe, there's actually a slight leak in there. So you get a little bit of blow through of that dark exhaust. I took pastel and worked that in. I knew that would stick really well to the matte finish and not rub off. The last bit of detail, and it seems to be a theme in a lot of my competition replicas, are footprints. The guys getting in and out of this car when it's on display, as they're picking up their feet, they scuff the side pipes. So I made some little scuffs on both sides. All the pictures my client sent me and made scuffs exactly like what's in there. That was a great challenge and a lot of fun. I think it's very successful. Something I retained, a really cool thing that I really enjoyed doing development on the die cast was the gas cap. It's hinged. Even on this car, it was toned down, but again, a hinged gas cap. I just love that detail. This was a really fun challenge, a fun build. I hope you enjoyed seeing it. If you'd like to see details of the build in progress, there are posts on our Patreon. Updates on the, all the little steps that went into building this. The link is in the description. Okay, look, this is only temporary, but look, there's nothing on my bench. I have to get working on that. Follow your muse wherever you may find it, and may there always be a project on your bench. Thanks for watching.